Hi there and welcome back to the channel. Postprocess is here again yet with another Unreal Engine tutorial. After attending animation and rigging sessions on Unreal Fest, I got a lot of useful information and, as we all know, Unreal Engine documentation is incomplete and not enough. It was a really great opportunity to talk with devs and learn something useful. In today's video I will talk about how to import static mesh and convert it to skeletal mesh. With Unreal Engine Skeletal Mesh Editor, I managed to rig for loud power armor all inside Unreal without even opening Blender, just straight importing static mesh and rigging it in Unreal. Don't worry, I will have another video on that, so don't forget to subscribe and actually turn on notifications also so you won't miss it. And now let's create car skeletal mesh. We will create bones, do the weight painting and prepare car for control rig without going back and forth into Blender using add-ons to create bones or another 3D software for creating skeletal meshes. And also we will talk about downsides of this approach. Before we start, it is required to enable a couple plugins in the project, so click here on settings, plugins and search for skeletal mesh editing tools and enable it. I have already enabled it in my project. Next, search for Modeling Tools Editor Mode and Static Mesh Editor Modeling Mode. Enable both of them and restart engine if required. As I have it already enabled, I will not restart it now, but if you enable it for the first time in the project, you would need to do so. Now let's import our car mesh. For this scenario, I will be using the Cyberpunk car I found on Sketchfab. It is quite low poly and will be a good example on how to work with it. Simply drag and drop the FBX file from folder to content browser of Unreal, make sure you have combined meshes checkbox ticked and hit import. Sometimes mesh may have improper orientation, as you can see, this one has also enormous size. This is why we enabled Modeling Tools plugin. You can now drop the mesh inside the scene and change its size to 0.01 .01, as it is 100 times bigger than it should be in Unreal. Now make sure you have enabled rotation snapping and rotate the car so it has its proper position. Remember, it should be facing X forward and Z up, as it is default Unreal Engine directions. Now we can bake those transforms to static mesh and have our model properly oriented and scaled. Press Shift F5 on your keyboard or enter modeling mode here. Select Transform and Conversion tab, Bake Transform, Make sure you have checked Bake Rotation and Bake Full Scale, hit Accept. Also you can see it is also properly looking in Content Browser. And now it is time to convert it to Skeletal Mesh. Right click on Static Mesh and select Convert to Skeletal Mesh. By default this window can open with Creation Type, Use Existing Skeleton. But we don't have any suitable car skeleton yet, so pick Create New. Root bone placement I keep at center. You can try using center bottom, but I'm always using center and my rig is built around center root bone placement. So now we have our skeletal mesh, but we have only root bone which affects whole mesh. In total, we will create 9 of them, but don't worry, that will be simple. Open Edit Bones tab and Edit Skeleton. Right click here in Empty Field and select New Bone. Connect it to root. This will be our first wheel bone. Let's name it front left or just FL. Great, now we have our first bone, but how do we place it directly in the center of the wheel, right? You can drag it manually, but I can guarantee that the result will not be precise. So in order to snap it to geometry, click here, select vertices, edges and triangles to place bone. Or press T on your keyboard. Disable marquee ignore collisions. Otherwise, you will select vertices on the other side of the model as well. Now find vertices or edges that form a center of the wheel, or try to select the whole wheel. I find this circle in this perfect center of the wheel, so I just select all of them and they form a perfect spot for snapping. Click on Snap button or V on your keyboard. But there is a problem that the bone is snapped to outer side of the wheel and it will not behave correctly in case of steering. We need to place the bone inside where the wheel hub is located. Let's disable vertices mode and switch to front view and place the bone on Y axis somewhere at minus 90 approximately. And also reset all rotation values. Now we have bone properly placed inside the wheel, right near wheel hub, and during steering it will be looking fine. Hit accept. Okay, we have created our first bone, and it wasn't hard, right? 
and don't worry, creating others would be much, much faster. As you can notice, our bone doesn't affect our mesh yet. Don't worry, we will get there later. Now let's get back to edit skeleton and we will mirror our bone to create new ones. First, let's mirror bone for our front right wheel. Click on mirror options and here on mirror axis select Y and click mirror. New bone will be placed precisely in our right wheel, no adjustments needed. Let's rename our bone to front right. And it looks good so far. Now let's change axis of mirroring back to X and create bones for rear wheels. Name the bone RR or rear right. This bone naming structure should always remain the same as later we will be doing modular rig which uses those bone names. Looks like this model has symmetrical wheelbase but you can never be sure, so I will repeat our trick with snapping here. Even though it looks like it is placed correctly, I don't believe it will work. So again I will select vertices mode, don't forget to uncheck ignore collisions, pick this circle, snap bone to it. and correct Y-axis position at the bone to value 90. Reset all rotations and mirror this bone on Y-axis. Name mirrored bone rear left and all wheels are prepared. As I said, remember, this bone naming convention should always be the same. Now let's create caliper bones. This will be much faster as caliper bones should be placed in the same position directly under wheel bones. Press Ctrl D on the keyboard to duplicate and attach duplicated bone to corresponding wheel bone. Rename it to caliper front left or CFL. Do that for all wheel bones. And lastly, let's create the body bone, which will affect only our car body and place it at zero coordinates. Make sure body is not attached to any of the other wheel bones, it should be attached only to root, so hit accept after that. As I mentioned before, our bones are not affecting our mesh yet, only root affects it. But we are gonna fix it. We are going to do the weight painting. Basically, weight painting dictates which bone and how much will affect the painted geometry on a scale from 0 to 1. It is necessary for character models to properly stretch and move geometry during animations or with the rig. But with cars it's much much simpler because it is basically a hard surface. So you can just bind geo with value 1 to each bone and it will work, so that's how we're gonna do that. Navigate to edit skin weights, select edit weights and now you'll see a grid which can be either painted by brush or selected by vertices. Black color means nothing is affected by selected bone and white means that the selected bone affects weights of painted area. For hard surface I prefer vertices mode, let's bind weights for body bone first. Open vertices mode, drag to select some of them and hit flood. It will select all connected vertices, make sure you have body bone selected and hit add. It will set weights to value 1 for the body bone. Now let's select the rest of the body and keep adding it to body bone. It looks fine and all is assigned to body bone. 
No worries about the wheel, we will be assigning it later for rare right bone. Hit accept. Now if you try to change body bone position, it will affect only this part. Alright, now I see I forgot to add exhaust and diffuse it to body bone. I can quickly fix that with the same method, select portion, flood and add. Next are the wheels and the process is pretty similar. Select corresponding wheel bone, edit weight, select portion of the wheel, flood and make sure you have the correct bone selected and hit add. Select next wheel bone and do the same for corresponding wheel. Always make sure you have correct bone selected. You can also try using brush but I think brush works better for characters not for cars but it may be useful for painting the places where connections of vertices is not reached by flood operation or grow. I personally just find flood faster approach for weights on cars. We also have caliper bones, right? Even though this car doesn't have calipers, we can bind those axle shafts to caliper bones just for demonstration purposes. Approach is pretty much the same, select geometry and add weights to the selected bone. Some of parts of geometry may be connected in the way you don't expect and in that case you would need to use either brush or grow operations to properly select areas for weight assignment. Do that for all axles and assign it for caliper bones then. When you are done, hit accept. Ok, we have created skeletal mesh, created bones and did the weight paintings. Now let's check the results. Our wheels are spinning in the center of origin, they can be steered and caliper bones are also working even though by default bones are affecting child bones and it can be disabled in the control rig. But all is working as expected. You can rotate, move up and down and steer, everything is possible. Now just make sure that none of your bones have any rotation whatsoever. Reset it for every bone as it may later affect the rigging. And well, that's it. That was fast even with the whole explanation. Usually it takes me about 10 minutes to prepare a car from static mesh without any skeleton in it. It would take me much longer if I used Blender even with Unreal Vehicle Rig add-in because of going back and forth and so on. And now as we already have created the skeleton, that would be even easier if you would like to add another car to a project. So when I input another static mesh, I drag and drop it again as static fix its orientation to proper direction using modeling tools by Bacon Transform. You can also do that by changing import settings, import rotation on static mesh details and click re-import. But I prefer editor view as you don't always know which direction you have to rotate the car. And now when you want to convert your static mesh to skeletal, select use existing skeleton and you'll have your old bones already there. You would need only to fix bone position and do weight painting and it's pretty much it. Now let's talk about downsides of this approach. Even though Unreal is getting better and better with all these new features and functions, I think they are just not mature enough and lack some functionality. For example, it is really hard to snap bone to center of origin of some part. Yes, you can select vertices, but what if there is no determined center origin on the wheel? Why weight painting has the grow command, but edit skeleton doesn't? I would like to select and grow the selection in the editing so I can select the wheel as a whole and then snap the bone to the whole selected wheel and it will land directly in the center, like for example in Blender center to origin, or for example select geometry by material, or by all connected geo like Ctrl L functions in Blender. And if you face some more complex geometry it's getting really hard to select 
all what you need to weight paint. And in those cases, it's definitely much easier to do another 3D software. But still, Unreal Engine's Skeletal Mesh Editor is quite impressive. It offers you great functionality, so you don't need to wrap your head around how bones should be oriented in other software, do skin weights right inside the engine, or edit them there. Basically eliminating other software from your pipeline. Just import the static mesh character and rig it right now in Unreal Engine for Unreal Engine Skeleton. As I mentioned in the beginning, I managed to rig and weight paint Fallout Power Armor, animate it successfully and not leave an Unreal Engine for this purpose, just convert it, weight paint it and rig it in place. But as I said, it's not mature enough and if you have more complex geometry, it is better to use other software you're experienced with, so it still needs some time for development and improvement. I probably won't say that it is a killer of Maya or Blender for rigging, but it is a really really good start which simplifies the process of rigging and creating the skeletal meshes for developers, for games and cinematics. And for me, who is a noob basically in Blender or Maya and I don't have enough experience to rig characters there and deal with the rotated bones and the wrong orientation, it is lifesaver because it is much easier for me to create skeletal meshes and rig my characters. And what's next you might be wondering? Well, this whole video was just a setup for modular car control rig component. I'm still editing next tutorial, it will be posted in a couple of days, so don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss it. But it is going to be very long and we'll have suspension working here and stuff. So I decided to introduce you to skeletal mesh editing tools first, so you will be prepared. In the meanwhile, feel free to check out my previous car rigging videos. I have the same bone structure there that we've created today and you can try rigging your own vehicle by using this method. And this is it for today, I hope you learned something new about Unreal Engine Skeletal Mesh Editor. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.